for the questions. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 6. You should answer the questions as you listen because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 6. Thank you for calling Millennium Office Supplies. If you would like to place an order, please press 1. Your call has been placed in a queue. A customer service operator will be with you shortly. Gina speaking. How can I help you? Oh, hello. I'd like to order some stationery, please. And who am I speaking to? John Carter. Right. Can I just confirm your account number and the name of your company, John? Sure. The account number is 692411. 692411. Right. And you're from Rainbow Computers? Uh, no. The company is Rainbow Communications. Oh, OK. I'll just fix that on the system. Communications. And what would you like to order, John? Uh, envelopes. We need a box of A4, that is, normal size envelopes. White, yellow or manila? Um, we'll have the plain white, please. Uh, but the ones with the little windows. OK. One box, A4, white. Just the one box, was it? Um, on second thoughts, make that two boxes. We go through heaps of envelopes. Um, as a matter of interest, are they made from recycled paper? No, you can't get white recycled paper. The recycled ones are grey, and they're more expensive, actually. Right, we'll stick to white, then. Something else, John? Yes, we need some coloured photocopy paper. What colours do you have? We've got purple, light blue, blue, light green, whatever you want, pretty much. There are 500 sheets to the pack. Right, let's see. Um, we're going to need a lot of blue paper for our new price lists, so can you give us ten packs, please? Make sure it's the light blue, though. Ten packs of the light blue. The woman asks the man if he needs anything else. To ten. Now listen to their conversation. Anything else that we can help you with? Um, uh, let me think. What else do we need? Uh, oh, I'm sure there was something else. Pens, paper clips, fax paper, computer supplies, office furniture. Yeah, ah, oh yes, we need floppy disks. Do you have those nice coloured ones? Yes, but they're a bit more expensive than the black ones. Oh, that's all right. I'm not paying anyway. <laughs> right. Floppy disks. And what about diaries for next year? We've got them in stock already and it's a good idea to order early. Um, no, I think we're all right for diaries. But something we do need is one of those big wall calendars. You know, one that shows the whole year at a glance. Do you stock those? We certainly do. OK, can you include a wall calendar then, uh, with the other stuff? Um, just make sure it's got the whole year on the one side. Sure. And do you have a copy of our new catalogue? No, I don't, but could you send one? Yes, I'll pop one in with the order. You'll find it a lot easier to remember what you need if you have our catalogue in front of you next time. Yes, good idea. And um, when can you deliver this? Should be with you tomorrow morning. Can you make sure that it's not after 11.30am? 
because I have to go out at twelve. There's only myself here on Fridays. Fine. I'll make a note on the delivery docket that they should deliver before half past eleven. Thanks very much. Thanks. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. Part two. You are going to hear a talk given by Madeline. She is going to introduce the recreational facilities on campus and in town. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 16. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 16. Well, good morning, everybody. My name is Madeline Stewart, and I'm here to tell you about the recreational facilities available on campus, and also to tell you something about what the town has to offer. You may already know that your students' union membership also includes membership of the sports union, which provides a range of sporting and recreational facilities on campus much the same as those in most British universities. The sports union has football, tennis, and cricket teams in local competitions. And really, most sports are catered for in some way on campus, even if they're just social matches. In the building itself, there are fitness classes and a full gym, including weights. The sports union can also provide cheap tickets to some major sporting events. And to keep you up to date with everything available, there's a weekly newsletter distributed around the campus. You should check this to find out the names and phone numbers of the contact people for each sport or activity you are interested in. Er, yes, did you have a question? Yes, uh, apart from what you've just said, does the sports union offer individual help in any of its activities, uh, for example, in getting fit and healthy? Yes, we do. The sports union has a fitness assessment clinic every Friday staffed by the resident sports trainer, who can provide advice on the best program for you and refer you to various charts. I'm sure you all realize that for any medical assessment or health problem, you should go to the university medical service. The sports trainer can also advise you on a suitable training program using the weights. And now on to Ashbury. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 17 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 17 to 20. And now on to Ashbury. For a town of its size, Ashbury has some unusually good leisure and sporting facilities, most of which are near the center of town and easily reached by bus from this campus. There's a new, well, almost new, Olympic-sized swimming pool. That's not quite in the central town area, but it's only a five-minute walk from the bus stop. Above the pool, there's a high-tech fitness center that any of you more serious fitness lovers would need to check out. Then, in the center of town, there's a sporting complex called the Anderson Center, which contains squash courts and facilities for a number of other indoor sports, such as basketball. And just around the corner from the Anderson Center, in the main street there, 
is an indoor bowling alley. All of these facilities are listed in the weekly newsletter, so I encourage you all to look through it and... That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turns to part three. Part three. You'll hear a conversation among two students and their tutor about the presentation they are going to make at the tutorial class. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. Right, Jason and Karen, uh, how are your presentations for the next tutorial class? Um, I feel a bit nervous. I haven't done that before. Although many of my classmates in the same tutorial group have finished theirs. But I think them a little uninteresting because they just read out their notes. I hope mine will be more attractive and... It seems you have a higher demand for yourself. As for me, I have no sense of uneasiness because I made one last semester. But I feel no sense of satisfaction about it. It lacked strong arguments, I think. How much did you get for the last presentation, Jason? Eighty-three mm, percent, actually. But my goal for the next one is over eighty-seven percent. It's pretty good. What is your topic for this one? Uh, strategies for reading. I feel my biggest problem is in the reading speed, rather than vocabulary, which is most students' problem, though. I am slow, especially in reading articles on my f major courses. They are complex and dull. Mm, have you found any effective methods? Well, I am not quite sure. I suppose to skim the books or articles is a... Uh, Good approach. Yes, by skimming the book first, you get the choicest parts. It saves a lot of time. You don't have to read every word of the passage, but you have to learn to read certain parts intensively. Yes, I include that in my presentation. There is one thing I'm not clear yet. Why don't we make presentations more related to our major? Once you learn to write clearly, read analytically, and listen to lectures effectively, You'll begin professional tutorials. That means you should start from the basics. Well, Karen, how is your presentation? Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 27 to 30. Now listen and answer questions 27 to 30. Oh, Karen, how is your presentation? I am still in a panic. I want to find some more interesting topics about writing, but I wonder what articles I can refer to, because there are so many of them. Did you get the list of the reading materials handed out last class? Yes, but there are over 20 on it. I have only a week to prepare, so I wonder if Okay, could... let me give you some suggestions. You needn't read them all, because some of them deal with the same issue. The article by Hallsworth is really worth reading. It covers the aspects of organising the thoughts and ideas. Okay, Hallsworth. You should also read the article by Jackson, 
But just look at the part on research methodology, now, how they did it. Right, I'll read that one. You should also read the article by Fisher, but just look at the part on the writing plan. That is, how to plan your writing in a systematical way. OK, Fisher, got that. Um, and if you have time, the one by Risewell says very relevant things. It teaches how to title your articles and make it appealing. You should finish the whole book. OK. Now, the one by Burns, if I were you, I wouldn't bother with the whole passage. Just read the conclusion, which summarises the use of rhetoric. Oh, now I understand. Thank you very much. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. You'll hear a program on the city of Brisbane. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Today in our Around the World programme, Mr White is going to recommend a charming city to you, Brisbane. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Have you ever been to Brisbane? Well, if you are looking for a mild climate, a relaxed atmosphere and a lot of culture, Brisbane might be the place for you. Its sunny cafes and offshore islands attract surfers and sun lovers, but it is also the arts capital of Queensland, with many museums and art galleries. This thriving artistic setting mixes well with Brisbane's beach town atmosphere. Together these two qualities make Brisbane a very desirable place to live. No wonder since 1980 over a half a million Australians have moved here. Brisbane is now Australia's third largest city. English settlers living in Australia established Brisbane in 1842. At that time, more than a 100,000 Aboriginal Australians were living in Queensland. As the settlers discovered Queensland's resources, more and more of them moved in. Regretfully, the settlers drove the Aboriginal Australians from their lands. By 1859, Brisbane had grown into a prosperous city. In 1988, the world watched as Brisbane hosted the World Expo. This international fair showcased new technology, but it also showed off the city of Brisbane to the world. Brisbane also hosts a wide range of events year-round. In April, everyone can enjoy a few laughs at the Comedy Festival, and movie lovers will enjoy a film festival that takes place every August. For two weeks in September, there is an outdoor festival of the arts. In October, a music festival draws a large crowd. And in January, you can see Brisbane's most bizarre event. You may be surprised to hear that. The annual cockroach races. That's right, people really do train and race cockroaches. Brisbane's nice climate and compact design makes it easy to explore on foot. Follow the golden arrows in the footpath around the city centre. This will lead you on a tour of Brisbane's historical district. From the city centre... Take a boat across the Brisbane River to Southbank. This area is popular for its bike paths, beach and weekend market. Hundreds of artists display their wares at this market. It's a great place to pick up some interesting handicrafts. Well, I think what you must be interested in 
is the unique native animals. Yes, you shouldn't visit Australia without seeing its trademark animals, the koala and kangaroo. The Lone Pine Koala Sanctuary has both. It is located just outside the city centre in beautiful Parkland. You can hold one of the park's 130 koalas or feed the kangaroos. Another quiet refuge from the city is Mount Kuta, about eight kilometres from Brisbane. On a clear day, it offers spectacular views of the city. It also has hiking trails and beautiful gardens. Along the Brisbane River, a sunset cruise is also very relaxing. The areas around Brisbane are impressive. A coastal drive south of Brisbane will take you along the Gold Coast. This famous coastline boasts some of Australia's best beaches. Stradbroke Island is another easy day trip from Brisbane. A cliff on the island called Point Lookout offers a great view. From there you can see dolphins swimming below. Brisbane Forest Park, to the north of Brisbane, is a great place for hiking and camping. These great getaways, along with Brisbane's own laid-back charm, make this city an ideal place to visit. That is the end of part four. So this was today's listening. We all appreciate your efforts and also do subscribe for daily real exam level practice as practice can give you your desired band score.